Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh huh. So come get some. Cromcon. Cromcon. <laughs> Fairview's coffee has mysteriously gone missing. Mayhem ensues when strange, coffee-craving zombies plague the city. Detective Mickey Potatoes, an overworked public servant, uncovers why ordinary citizens are losing their minds and how to stop the coffee apocalypse. But it involves the Mafia. And when you're dealing with Mafia crime families, nothing is ever easy. The Mafia controls everything in the city, including the police, including him. If he breaks the Mafia, they will break him. So, the city is without coffee. The city is burning before his very eyes, but he's powerless. Detective Potatoes has the power to stop the coffee apocalypse. But if he does, he could lose everything. The Madness Comic Network and Comic Related Madness proudly presents Monday Madness, featuring pops and the richness, and indie creators from around the world. Tune in to our content on Comic Talk with Pops Van Zandt on YouTube. got my co-host in the backstage. I got my first guest in the backstage. Rich, if you're drawn, you better be drawn Dracula. That's all I got to say. 
We out here to talk about these guys, what they're doing. You know what's up. Where is he? Where is that? I'm right fucking here. Where? Where? I'm right here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about oh, this thing. I'm a strange guy. Now you're here. Yeah, now I'm here. The fuck? <laughs> I am. I'm drawing one of the fucking Draculas here. All right? God did you uh, Did you look at that campaign? Yeah, I looked at the campaign. I'm looking at it right now. Dude. Dude. I'm looking at it on my phone right here, right fucking now. I'm looking at some honeys. With We're strength. midway through our campaign and decided we need to completely revamp in capital letters it this weekend with all new sexy and scary digital art from series artist Les Garner. Holy shit, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's good, dude. He's That's good. Oh, come on. Um look at that nasty. He he's he's actually drawn me before. He has? Yeah, you want to see? Oh, I'm sorry. You want to see? <laughs> I see. I said some naughty shit to you. <laughs> I, I, I don't pay attention to ninety percent of. I don't saying. blame. I don't blame you. I wouldn't pay attention to you either. I'm a rude boy. I'm trying to find it here because he drew me. I used it from. It's like my Twitter um avatar. Where the hell? I, don't know. I got so many damn things with art in it. It's ridiculous. Mm. Where is that? There it is. Look at this, Rich. You're going to love this. Let me see. This is good stuff right there. Look at that. Oh, that is good stuff. Man. Yeah, he's he's good. Man. He knows yeah. his shit. He knows his yeah. shit. Bring him good up. Yo, hey, I want to introduce this guy. He's been a friend of mine, member of the madness for quite a while. Mr. Lascar. What's up, dude? Hey, y'all. Hey, man. Straighten myself up here a little bit. Mm -hmm. How goes? How goes? Ah, uh, well, let's see, it's uh, it, it, it's a little hard to focus on things because it's day three of deer season out here right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Pops was laughing at me because I just, I, my girl came in during the run up to this, and she was like, "Lunch is done." I'm like, "Oh, I gotta go," because uh, she was doing, <laughs> doing some stir fry for me off of a back strap. Nicely done, days. man. That was, that was my, that, like, dude, freaking, freaking November comes, and that's, like, all I can think about is getting out there and getting one. Or getting a few. I'm, ho I'm hoping, hoping we can, uh, we can uh, goose this, uh, this damn Kickstarter up a little bit and maybe uh, help me get a couple more days out in the woods instead of, uh, <laughs> you know, here, here slaving my ass off on this artwork. Well, well I'm looking at, I'm speaking of which, I'm I'm looking at your campaign now. Rain of Dracula. And yep. uh by Thorny Comics. This is your first one? Uh it yeah, says it's first created. It's uh Thorny Comics is uh the the business of a gentleman. It's a new business from a gentleman named Jerry Carita. Okay. Who was, uh, he has another Kickstarter that he did out there that was that was successful for a completely different kind of thing called samurai cicada that was it was really cute yep that's the kind of bloody, <laughs> but it was also it was bloody and cute but the reign of dracula jerry is friends with rich davis the writer of reign of dracula so uh rich rich uh kind of brought him in to, to run the kickstarter and everything hey, so, nice. uh, nicely done thank you you're welcome yeah i uh outside of comics i've been a uh, a CG artist, a technical director on a number of animations and things, and uh, I've, I, I've worked in uh, I've worked in uh, in 3D and CG art since the early 90s. Ooh, what's your uh, what's your poison with your with your uh, 3D modeling software? Oh, Maya, Maya. Oh, yeah, brush. man. Yeah, exactly. The hell Maya with fucking. Brush. Yeah, absolutely, man. The hell with freaking 3ds Max. Well, I hate I, actually, I hate 3ds Max. I actually started out in 90, 93, 94 with 3D That's Studio DOS. Wild. Oh God. That's yeah, a like while the, ago. The first the first 3D model I ever built, I actually had to code the damn thing. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. And that's um it's been dude. 
I'll tell you what, I mean, because I, I, I got into that right after I had just gotten into comics back then. I was, okay. I was, I was 19. So I think I started with 3D at about 20, almost 21 years old. And I'd oh. been drawing comics for a year or two at that point. And of course, it's mid '90s, so <laughs> that that blew up. That was a, that was a the dark times. Sure but the, and I was working at Marvel at that time. That oh, sucked. Shit. Yeah, it was pretty bad. But anyway, that, I don't care about me. I'm a narcissist. I'll talk about myself all day. Uh, yeah, man. You talk about yeah, your. I, I was working. I was drawing. Uh, oddly enough, to be back on vampires now. I started out drawing vampire comics, and uh, oh, nice. Okay. And then, uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, I had seen the writing on the wall when I was in high school already, you know, yeah. from high school I, that the, you know, the, the, with computer color separations had become a thing and all That's that. Right. So I, I scrounged up money and taught myself to build a computer, built the damn computer. And then from there kept scrounging until I could get my hands on a copy of 3d studio max or 3d That's studio right. DOS it was before yep. max was a thing. And, uh, I was compiling, uh, I mean, I started out building models. I was teaching myself 3D with the goal being to uh, do mods on Doom. And I, I built my own Star Wars mod back then. I think the first, mod, first model I ever built was the R2-D2. And I, 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 actually, I actually designed it out on, on graph paper. Oh, in man. Three sheets of graph paper for the orthographics. So that everywhere that there was a line, uh, it would uh, it would cross over with the grid, and I could get the coordinates and triangulate those coordinates and put them into a spreadsheet, and then feed yeah, that yeah. in and have it compile facets from that, and then build it out the rest of the way from there. It was nuts. It's freaking nuts. nuts. But uh, yeah, way back then, back in the late '90s, by the late '90s, um, there was a thing called the Star Wars Modeling Alliance. That was a, an online community of 3D modelers who just built Star Wars shit for the fun of it. And uh, I was a moderator on that for a while. And uh, I'm I'm 100% confident that there's models that I've built that have turned up in God knows how many different fan films through the years. So, but uh, yeah, I, I, I had gotten out of comics by the end of the 90s just because I wanted to be able to pay my damn rent. And uh, I, I, you, you must have been like the captain of wrong place, wrong time. This is, pr I'm looking at some of your interior pages. This is pretty stellar. Thanks, man. Well, I, I'm looking at Appreciate it, it. and um, you actually can tell a story and oh, you yeah. use perspective. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm very conscientious about that. And, and full, full disclosure. What you're seeing, these pages you're seeing, are yeah. from the 24, first 24 pages of this. And I completed those pages, 24 pages, pencils, inks, and washes in two weeks. I'm not surprised. Two weeks. Nicely done. Thanks, man. Is this all traditional? Some of it is, and some of it's digital. The, uh, it's a good marriage between the two of them. What's the digital part? Um, it varies. A lot of okay. times I will do, like if there's a specific weapon or a specific mechanical item, then mm -hmm. I will build a 3D model of that myself. And I will, nice like, I'll draw a traditional, scan it, bring it in, and then pose the, pose the model against that. Ah, and it's like white, that's white boxing. Yeah, like light boxing. And then I'll that's white boxing. That. Holy shit. That's and nice. Then I'll, turn, I'll turn that into blue line. Woo! Print that and then ink that. Wow, that that's kind of the way I kind of do it. I, I mean, I do um, I do layouts on uh, in digital. I, I just do my scribblies and my uh, plotting of the pages of how it's going to look, and then I lightbox um, the scribblies, and then I uh, finish up the blue line, and then I throw the pencils in, and then I scan the page, and then I digitally ink it. I know yeah, it seems. A lot of this is digitally inked. Some of it's traditionally inked. I, I literally go back and forth just depending on the mood I'm in. Yeah. Like there's, with uh, the way that I work, there's really no, there, there's no boundary between any of it. 
you know, whatever it is, man, you're, you're doing it's a stellar job. Thanks, dude. I'm, I'm in love with these pages. I, I mean, I love this. I mean, you have really great. Yeah, forget it. I, I mean, th this is. How you never tr did you try for any of the big two? No, never did. Oh, after, man, you would after you'd be a great fit for Ghost Rider. Oh, dude, I would kill to do good. Like I, I know, and you there should. A, there is a it's like short damn, this list. Is work. There is a short list of 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 my favorite characters that I would just I would kill to do Ghost Rider, uh, Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. Doctor Fate, and Captain America. Oh man, you'd be perfect for Ghost Rider and and Doctor Strange. Like I I, I would I would. <laughs> It's probably obscene how far I would go if I could get to draw a traditional Captain America set in the forties. Oh my God! You no, know, I mean that with the 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 mo literally with the motorcycle from back then and the costume, yeah. just like just an old school Captain America man. That would be so much fun. I I was a bit. I mean, I loved the art from the from the late eighties, early nineties from everybody, and I, and I still do. Yeah. Sometimes bits of that creeps in, but as I as I grew older, I found myself going back and just studying the ever loving piss out of uh, Bernie Wrightson and uh, uh, oh crap, why is the name uh, name escaping me now? I've got one of his books sitting over there, and I can't see it for my light. Uh, Not Sinkovich. No, I mean I love Sinkovich, but uh, uh, is that how you pronounce his name? I never knew that. No, I've always said it. I. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, crap. Why is that name name escaping me? He did. I've got these two books that are uh, from uh, the days of creepy. The one Bernie remember. Wrightson, and the other one is a guy from. He did a lot of Doc Strange stuff. Paul. Uh, it's not Paul Smith. He was the early '80s. No, no. This was back in the '60s and late '60s, early '70s. Oh, I don't uh, know. Okay. Man, that's making me mad. I'm looking. I'm look <laughs> I hate it because I'm trying of to think of who drew that kind of stuff. Um, Tom uh, Yeats. He, he Tom worked Yeats on, is the guy that took Spider over. Tom, Tom Yeats is the guy that took over uh, uh, Swamp Thing. I am Bernie I'm, quit, I'm, I'm just gonna quit doing to, that. Swing around to the old Juju machine. And uh, you got to forgive me. I'm one handed right now, so I got to type with my voice. Yeah, you also but, got the Vigil Brothers. They both kill it. That kind of art. You know. Let's see. Early Doctor. I hate typing with one hand. I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> it really knows what you mean. No, I don't. I'm not that kind of boy. Let's oh, my God. Dr. Strange. Oh, yeah. Or it is. Dr. X. Yeah, there were a ton of artists that came out. Good Lord. Man. <laughs> um, crap. That is, give me two seconds. This is pissing me off. He's going to go I, get it off the wall. He's like... I'm literally gonna go pull this damn thing off the off the shelf. I'm pulling it off the wall. <laughs> where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, if somebody has walked off with this book, I'm gonna have a damn fit. <laughs> I've got uh, some young people who I kind of mentor a little bit, and uh, they're always fascinated by my old comics. Are they now? Well, that's shit. good to know. That yeah. is, that is pissing me off. Really stuck. S Steve, was it Steve? Shit. Ah, uh, anyway, that's making me mad. I want to <laughs> say he was the first artist ever on Spider-Man. Dick. Ditko. Ditko. Steve Ditko. Yeah. All right. That was a long way around for that shit, but, but there it was. We got there. Yeah, Steve Ditko. Man, his his stuff, 
when I look at his stuff with Marvel back then, and a lot of his stuff with Marvel through the years, it's good, but it's nothing like what he did for Creepy. No, I'm sure. Not even. Like, you can tell how rushed he was. And you see the stuff that he did. You know, looking at his Marvel work, if I compare that next to, you know, Bernie Wrightson, who's my all-time favorite, then, uh, then there's not, I mean, Bernie just stomps piss out of it. But you start looking at the stuff they did side by side working with Creepy. Man, Ditko could hang. And uh, I'm such a big Lovecraft fan. And he brought, if you look at the Creepy stuff, you can absolutely see what he was going for when he was working on Doctor Strange. And you can, you can tell that he wanted to do a certain thing and they just wouldn't let him. So it's, it's, that does a big influence. Yeah. I think, uh, so I think there's, a little, there, there's, there's also a little bit more to your story than, than all this. Um, when I met, when I met Les, he didn't have a problem with his hands. Yeah. Okay. Um, he had a stroke recently that took away his mobility on his left side. Yeah. Oh man. Are you all right? February 20th of this year, nine months ago, I had a double ischemic stroke that. Wow. How the they, fuck that. God that damn it, my, man. Took out my entire left side. Of your brain? The, the entire left side of my body was paralyzed. Oh, okay. Uh, so so they took half your brain out. No, no, no. No, the wound, the wound to oh, my brain. Shoot. Is kind, scared the shit kind, out of me. It was, but it, the wound to my brain is, is a small one. But it's, oh, okay. it's, it, it was a wound that happened uh, right inside the, uh, the, the motor core. On oh, my, God. On my, on, it was on the right side of my brain on the motor core. So it took out all the motor function of the left side of my body. Oh, my God. And, uh, Holy fuck. I, the, 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 the nurses, oh, the oh, nurses were. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. Hello, Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Hello. Okay. But when they were putting me in the hospital, the nurses didn't know what to think because I had my iPad with me because I, I draw when I'm doing digital stuff. I, I draw on my iPad a lot. Yeah. And I'm sitting in a hospital, sitting in the the bed in the emergency room with it on my right leg, and I'm literally working on pages from another book. <laughs> and they're putting tubes in me. I looked over at him at one point. And I was like, excuse me, could you stop fucking shaking me for a second? I'm trying to work here. Oh, give me a break. You really said that? You're out of yes, your I mind. Did. Yes, yeah. I did. Dude. My girlfriend right. was there. She saw it. That's oh, right. She, she was shaking her. She was scared to death. And I was like, I got to keep working. I, I, I just kept working yeah, through it. We're doing a show here, Rob. Oh, man, so, I'm I'm really happy that you. Yeah. How is your recovery going? Oh, I'm gonna let the dog well, out. I'll be right back. This is this, this, this is some funny shit. Now, I mean, I I've ended up telling this a lot over the months, but the, you know this. Uh, once once they got me in, they uh, they drugged me up, and I was pretty much passed out for like two solid days. Oh yeah. And okay. when I woke up, I was met with this doctor. Now I'm gonna set a picture for you here. Here's the doctor. I mean, I'm a big dude, I, but yeah. I, I've been a gym rat my whole adult life, big karate nut, all this kind of shit. So That's actually done. stupid that I had a stroke. But anyway, so here I am being me. And there's this doctor comes in at least 150, 200 pounds overweight using a walker himself. And he sits down. And he's like, well, son, I'm gonna, just going to give it to you straight. You're probably never going <laughs> to walk again. <laughs> probably never gonna that, walk again. That, that fat bastard was telling you, yeah, you're never gonna walk again. And you should have looked at him like, well, you're definitely gonna eat again I, after you finish with this <laughs> stick I literally Holy looked shit. at him in front of my son and my girlfriend, who were both there, and I said, Fuck you, I will walk out of this goddamn hospital. Nicely done. And Nicely he was done. just like, Oof, you kind of hoofed, walked out. And when he walked out, the nurse that was with him stayed, and I said, ma'am. Get me a physical therapist in this room as soon as you freaking can. She's like, we got one on, on the floor right now. I was like, get him in here. She got the guy in there, and he come yeah. in. He's like, yeah. He's like, you know, odds are you walking again are pretty slim, man. I was like, I don't care. I was like, you got to get a walker in here to get me up on it. I need to get on this leg, and we'll start doing stuff with it. Oh, and I, he got me up, 
out of the bed, helped me up. And I mean, I about fell over. It was, I couldn't hold myself up by myself. Not just yet. Yeah, no. no, he helped me along and I scooted through about 10 steps, about five out and five back to the bed. And I counted the steps and he asked me why I was counting. And I said, cause I was like, I want to know how many I did. I was like, when can you come back? He's like, well, I can be back here in a couple hours. I was like, good. Every time I see you, we're doing double. Wow. Every time I see you, we're going to double that damn number at least. And by the end of, by the end of a week in there, I was doing 1600 and some steps a day. And uh, because I had worked so hard, it got me into, into this special program at another, got me as a candidate for a program at another hospital, a bigger hospital. And Uh they, they screened me for it. And I went and I ended up staying there for a month and I worked those poor ladies to death, man. (laughs) <laughs> they Man, they would do, they they would do about three hours a day of uh, physical and occupational therapy with me, and yeah. in between, some of them would get mad at me They're like, "You need your rest." I was like, "I need to fucking walk," <laughs> and uh, I was like, "I want to walk. I'm gonna get this arm back." And I was like, "The I was like, resting in a bed ain't gonna do it." So I and I, I ended up schmoozing some of the nurses. And getting them to to let me, uh, they wouldn't let me try to walk on my own yet, but I could get them to let me uh, take the wheelchair and I could pad around with my feet, pull myself in the wheelchair, and they'd let me go down to the gym on the floor that I was in, and I could go down there, and I wasn't supposed to, but they they turned a blind eye to it, and let me go down there and work out by myself. So for the month I was in there, I was probably working out both supervised and unsupervised probably a total of eight hours a day nice. just pounding the ever loving hell out of it and uh i got you know i got fully retrained on how to walk i studied while i was in there learning about what was wrong with me and i'd i'd work on the stuff and study my ass off about it so i could know what to do when i got home and then when i got too sick of it or just just it was just overload i'd grab my i'd flip my iPad over and start drawing. So I was either, I was either working on getting my kit back or I was working on drawing. That's all that entire month. That's all that was, was round the clock slamming it. And, uh, I ended up having a friend who had, uh, connections with a, uh, I forgot what it was, was some convention up in, uh, Wisconsin and that he had told them, about what happened to me. And they said that if I was able, when I got out, they'd like to have me come speak at that convention because they thought it was an interesting story. So what was it? Uh, a week after I got out of the hospital, I drove myself to Wisconsin. You're out of your mind. I, the dro- one, <laughs> driving one handed, drove to Wisconsin. I got there. I was supposed to walk on a cane but I had my convention kit with me, set up the table, and I couldn't pull the floor dolly and walk on the cane at the same time. So I threw the fucking cane away. I was like, screw this. We'll do, we're doing it. So, you should be proud of yourself for all that you accomplished. That's well, now, I'm go, now I'm going to go let the other dog outside. Uh, <laughs> this is just got, avoiding an interview. At this anyway. Point, at this point, I'm... Uh, my leg is probably about 90 some percent recovered. I mean, I can almost start throwing kicks and doing karate stuff with it again. And my arm is like from the shoulder to the elbow is a hundred percent. Good. Good. And from the elbow to the wrist is probably about 40%. And that's the last stuff that ever heals from what yeah. I happened. So, you know, the elbow to the wrist is at about 40, hands at about 20. So, uh, and I'm coming up on nine months away from the stroke, which is still inside. The doctors, I, I hate that they say this because there's so many stories to prove against it. The doctors like to say that you have a, a nine to 12 month window after a stroke past which there really isn't any more recovery. I know that's bullshit. Cause I, I've, I've met a lot of the people. I've met a lot of people now who have recovered past that, but uh, you know, I'm, I am extremely proud of how far I've come 
in the time frame that I come. I mean, the my my therapist, I still have the therapist who was with me that first day is still my therapist to this day. And I only see him once a month now because three months ago, he was like, man, he's like, he's like, as far as I'm concerned, you're done. And he's like, everything after this is gravy. He's like, I never would have thought, thought it would come this far. And I'm like, dude, I ain't fucking done yet. And what do you mean? Well, you're not, you still have to get, you don't work yet. <laughs> yeah. You still I'm have like, to get the rest of your mobility back, but that's fantastic, man. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm like, you don't, you don't understand all my life. I peed with my left hand. <laughs> I was like, well, everything right feels then. wrong now. Everything feels completely everything's wrong now. Fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> everything's the stranger. <laughs> it's the stranger. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Nicely I've done. Got a, I've actually got a comic that I'm planning on doing. That oh, was no. A, no. A, com a comic that I'm planning on doing that, that was in, that's the the idea came to me one night while I was uh, laying there in the middle of the night in uh, the recovery center, yeah. and uh, it, it'll be it'll be badass. I mean, it's a uh, the other side of my life from comics has always been playing guitar, so that's like okay. the biggest tragedy for me out of this is I can't play my guitars yet. So there's there's a whole uh, story that came to mind for me about a uh, a guitar player who is in a in an accident that causes him to have a stroke and he ends up approached by a demon who offers to, uh, to give him everything back in exchange for the demon being able to, to use his body when he sleeps. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. and it, it's some evil shit that happens. He, he going to be a wanted man really quick, huh? Yeah, yeah. very much so. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, there, there's 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 some crazy ideas and things that came from it. Uh, I'm no. about I'm about three chapters into writing an actual actual book about yeah. this experience. So I, I got to ask you though, being a CGI guy, yeah, why no trailer? There there is a trailer for this, but it's not a CG trailer. Um, I. Uh, you see us play trailers on every show. Yeah. And I can't play uh, what I don't have, brother. Let, mm. Let's see. I'm going to message these guys right now over on another machine. Hey, guys, give me a link to the trailer I did because Pops wants to play it on here. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully one of these guys will respond real quick and give me that. If not, I'm trying to think of where I've got it that I could toss it to you. Because that's, uh, uh, I think uh, one of the guys involved with the book thought that it was too jumpy. And I'm like, well, okay. So uh, I'm, oh, here we go. Let's see. Logo. Give me just a second here. I, I'm, I'm just saying, Les, I know that some of these trailers that people make help sell their books. Because, I mean, yeah. they're not on every show, but if I have their trailer to play at the end of every show, people well, I'm, see, I'm, you know what I'm, I mean? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a thorny subject with me right now. <laughs> So that's, hey, that's we good. play them. We play them so people can put it. See it you know? I know. Ah, here we go. Let's see. I'm going to grab that. See, copy link. All right. I'm pasting a link for you here into over in Facebook. So I'm, a, I'm actually super proud of the trailer because uh, um, I produced the music that's in it. So the uh, you know guitar playing guitar is kind of my favorite thing to do with music, but I like writing music and producing music. And you know, since I can't play guitar, my my outlet for for music has been producing, just producing music. Right. And uh, so I did the the score for this and produced it. Then uh, the other book, I'm not sure what kind of limbo or hell this book is in right now. 
there's a there's a book I did called Homestead with Dirk Manning that's a werewolf western, and I did the trailer for it and composed music for that. Well, shit, I was just asking Dirk yesterday about coming out here on the show sometime soon. Uh, yes, I just, him, I just saw him last weekend at the con. Oh uh, well, now this this past, this past weekend, like the last few days, he was he was busy with his daughter seeing uh, Metallica and Pantera. Yeah, yeah, you got to be a dad. You got you got to be a dad. Yeah, Dirk Dirk took her to see Zach Wild. That's all that matters. She that that be, is all that matters, man. She will be fine now for the rest of her life. She will be perfectly fine. Oh she yeah, I'm, I'm Zach. Like, she's good. I, I've I've seen I've seen Zach so many times. It ain't even funny, man. I love love it. I seen Zach way back in like '98 do at oh. when he did a uh, an acoustic tour. Oh yeah, dude, he's playing the piano and and oh my god, that dude is he, so multi talented with music. It's amazing, dude. Back in I forgot what year it was. I think it was 2007 or 2008. I ended up having uh, meet and greet tickets for Black Label mm. for my birthday, and I took my son, and uh, we got up in the meet and greet line. We got up to Zach. My son was 12 at the time. Zach looks down at him and says, hey, little man, is this your first Black Label show? My son looks up and goes, this is my fifth. <laughs> Zach looks at his manager to stop everything. He gets down on the floor and starts talking to my son and playing with him. Spent a half hour wrestling and around in the floor with my boy. Stopped a line of 300 and some people to wrestle with my son. Then he gets up and Zach looks at me and says, man, so that little guy's got to be close to him, to my boy's age. Talking about Hendrix, his son. Okay. And he's like, I love what I do, but I miss my kids. Thank you for bringing this little guy out. And Zach Wild was tearing up. Dude, I know. That's, that yeah. dude's real as hell. I, I uh, and and he, a, well, he, 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 then, he then gives me this big ass bear hug, looks down at my son, and says, Always respect your father, little man. Yeah. And then tells his manager to get the photographer over there and starts taking pictures of my son and me. And uh, then has me and JD do a bunch of silly shit together in some photos. That was, See, that that was fun. J, JD is cool as hell, too. That dude plays a fretless bass. And for any of you guys that are watching, oh, yeah. you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> he, he's nuts, man. Uh, back when I lived up in Connecticut a long time ago, I, I had a friend who, after I moved away, he was playing in different bands up there. And I come to find out years later that uh, he was the rhythm guitar player in JD's band for a few years. Yeah. So it was just really weird stuff, man. Weird how things connect together. That was uh, the, the first time I saw Zach was Pride and Glory. Oh, dude. Okay, oh, first man. my first exposure to Zach, he was playing some heavy southern rock, dude. Pride and Glory redeems the banjo for me. Oh, dude, for sure. <laughs> man, good times. So, yeah, yeah, you guys it's, don't know it's, it's you been a while. Pride and Glory. A that thing has some, there's some heavy ass metal, some beautiful ballads. The mm. songs on that album are freaking amazing. Oh yeah, I'm just saying. Okay, I'll I'll, yeah, I'll that, drop off that now. But look, I got this video. Can we play this? Let it rip, man. Okay, we're play it. Here we go. Jesus. 
Now, what you got to do, though, is you got to put a little end cap on there with the link and leave it there for three, four seconds. People got a chance to read it. You know, there's it, all the art there and everything is beautiful, but we need info. Yeah, I'm bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I got it. Got it all cut together and watched it. I was like, okay, good. And I fired it off, you guys. I mean, so, yeah, the art's all beautiful, but man, we need info. We need tell yeah. us what it is, not just that little rain of Dracula at the end. Tell us what it is, what's going well, on. See, I you thought know? I thought the primary place people would ever be seeing it was on the Kickstarter page, which it's not there. So you know, yeah, well, I mean, is what it is. This this is why I ask people to give me their trailers because we do thirty or forty shows a week. And we can play that trailer to a bunch of different audiences. Well, I may, after I get off here today, I may just tack something on the end up there and we'll see what yeah. it does. A, l- a little front cap, Reign of Death, or Reign of Dracula, and then a little end cap with the, with the link, yeah. you know, the, the URL or whatever, because, you know, people want to know. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful, but where can I get it? <laughs> Tell me where I can get it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Well, I'm this is the first Kickstarter I've ever been involved with at all. So, you know, it's been a learning experience for me. I mean, I'm not, I, I wasn't the one, I haven't been the person running the Kickstarter by any stretch, but, uh, you know, I've been watching it and been kind of on call, busting out stuff for it along the way, trying to help bump it along, you know? And, uh, so, and I, I think, uh, I was thinking that the Kickstarter was going to launch in early October and it didn't launch until Halloween. I think that, that kind of hurt us quite a bit. Yeah. But, this should have been going for that whole month of October. Yeah. You know, well, what, what was the it's delay? Still, I mean, still, it's still solid. Uh, it's I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the delay was. Honestly, I had the, I had the first issue of it in the can by then. So, but you know, it is what it is. You know, I think uh, I think no, everybody I know a lot of times everybody that, everybody involved is learning quite a bit from it. So at least there's that. I, well, I need, I know I'd learned a whole lot. With, I mean, if it wasn't for Lori helping me with mine. Yeah. Yeah. You scroll on down that page, you'll see some of those uh, some of the digital covers that I've done, and then. Further on down there, I think they've got uh, stuff from the painted covers that I did last summer for this. And then uh, <clears throat> today, I just yeah, that's up. so fucking hot. I love it. Well, there's there's uh, so N- good NSFW versions of all these as well. Nicely done. Woo! Yeah, that red one's my favorite. I dig. I dig. I super dig. Nicely done, man. Well, I'm hoping, uh, hoping some folks will see those, and I might pick up a little cover work off of that. Yeah, you gotta let people know you're available for cover work, though. A lot of people don't know. You know? I don't. I don't know how to let people know I'm available. I mean, I, that's my number one problem as a professional. Is uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm confident that I have my craft down really well, but. I've spent so many years and so much time and so much time day to day just on the work, on honing the work. When it comes to actually getting the word out there and reaching people and all that, I'm a fucking dumbass. Hey, everybody. He's available for cover work. Yeah. Hey, everybody. He's available for cover work. Yes, now what you yes do, I am. <laughs> what you do, Les, is you ask somebody to clip that out of this show. On YouTube, yeah. you'll know, clip that little spot out, and you play it. <laughs> you got Henry's telling everybody you're available for cover work. What else do you need? What else do you need? You, you know, you just add a yeah. little reach me at blah blah blah, and you got a spot advertising you're available for cover work, just like that. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Cover covers and interiors, man. I mean, <laughs> I, I have I have probably some of the most reasonable rates around. <laughs> Awesome press. Everybody's available for cover work. Yes. Yeah, see that's let let that let that henceforth be the song of my people. 
I'm telling you, you get, I mean, this is this is how you do it. It's networking, it's promotion. You know, you got to tell people what you're doing. I'm terrible at that. I, I'm I'm very self consciously terrible at that. <laughs> get a link tree account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so oh, far man. behind but it's funny on some things I'm, I, I stay way ahead of the curve like when it comes to like 3D and CG and imaging and stuff like that I stay way out ahead of the curve on all that stuff when it okay, comes now, to like social these are media, some of the other people that you have doing doing covers you oh yeah Bella. Bella did a really nice one there she, it, what she did on that really reminds me of, uh, of Mike Lindsner and uh, who do we got here? It's Rob Retriano. Look, this guy is, is a longtime member of the Madness. He posts all the time what he's doing in the Madness. Fun, take, fun, fun. Take a lesson from Rob or tell Rob to start posting your stuff too. All right. I, uh, as a fun fact about that one, that <laughs> image actually got, uh, got mm -hmm. Rich Davis, the writer on this, he was posting that image and it got him. Got him spanked real hard by uh by, by Facebook. And you can join the independent creators directory for only five dollars for a lifetime membership. Interesting. I will have to look into that. And basically it's just a directory where everybody's stuff and, and Joe keeps it updated. You send him new links, you let him know you got new stuff going on. He updates your little page. Well, I will tell you, I mean, right now. You know, it's uh, it, it's de I'm definitely doing the doing some bargain basement prices on stuff just from uh, I paid ten dollars for that, so jump on it, okay? I uh, you know, <laughs> what's the way to put it? Uh, the CG stuff has kind of always paid my bills, right. and uh, you need to be able to do. You really kind of need both hands to do it because it takes a lot of key commands and stuff like that. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually really does. I now I've adapted this work, man. It's all work. Well, I, I've adapted to where uh while I was in the hospital, I had this idea. I looked up where I could buy little pedals that were uh, these OEM pedals from this source out of China that I could buy and then program them for whatever I needed them to do. So I, I got six of these and built a a pedal board with these pedals on it and each of the pedals are assigned to certain keys that my left hand would frequently have to do. So I'm still able to work in that, that field. Uh, I am using my feet for the key commands now instead of my hand, but uh, it's, it's way slower and it's definitely impacted my income. So, so yeah, hire me. So you're, you're gonna, you're hire gonna me, be, people. Hire well, you're going to be working on your own. Right hand. My, my right yeah, hand is strong like bull. So can you I, switch I hands? To use it. Can you switch hands? Now I gotta throw some more love out to my boy uh, Brian Silverbacks, who's also yeah. been a member of the man. I think Brian was at like the first Cromcon way back in 2020, man. Um, way back, yeah. Good stuff. Yes, yeah, this, this left hand. I can carry some things with it and do some kind of gross tasks with it, you know, just to what you do? Um, and little stuff, but nothing. I can't do any kind of fine work with it, like like typing or anything like that. That ain't happening yet. So sucks. Really sucks. But has you know, to be something. God saw fit to keep my right hand functioning. So I've been a drawing madman ever since. Now this is when you draw digitally, correct? Uh, the, that that dual piece there for the wraparound cover. No, that's yeah. traditional. I actually okay. did that. That was I did that last summer. And uh, fun fact about that: that's two of six. There's six six. When theoretically, when all this goes to diamond, it'll be cut up into six issues. Then, okay. so for Kickstarter, we're we're doing three forty-eight page uh, pieces. Okay. And Iman will get six 24 page pieces. Now there's six, you know, so then there's six covers that I painted last summer and they all connect. 
And the originals of those are three feet wide by four feet tall. So that oh, I love that. Cover, that if you, if you if you go back up to that cover, um, the originals of those all together make a piece of artwork for which the original is four feet tall and eighteen feet long. Damn. That was most of that work was done with the boards to it mounted on my barn. Good God, man. So I did most of the painting on that outside in 95 degree heat last summer. Uh, <laughs> and, and that was just one of those things. And I've been telling people ever since I'm like, if we're having a business conversation, if you hear me say the words, wouldn't it be cool if, just go ahead and stop me because I'm probably about to kill myself with something. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm probably about to say something stupid. Are you one of them hold my like dear people? Do. Oh, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, you absolutely. are, aren't you? You're going to hold my beer. Oh man. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hold my beer. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it is what it is, man. <laughs> well, you know, the, I grew up out in Appalachia, and there ain't a whole lot to do out there, so we're bored. So we just come up with dumb shit to do. Tie man. ropes to trees and go swinging. Exactly, no man. Fun, nowhere around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dare each other to light a firecracker near the meanest dog in the neighborhood kind of crap. All right, so we got a Jonathan McDaniel cover. Uh -huh. mm, yeah, I believe. Hey, yeah, Rich, Rich for a minute. Mm. That's pretty cool. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sean Cosby. Oh, Sean Cosh. That's a gorgeous fucking cover. Holy Christ. Oh my God. That's like an album cover. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That is really cool. And Tyler J. Haddix. Good stuff, man. All the trade dress, all yeah, the surgeon, all the ball. Get all of them, all of them. In the whole world of Dracula. Yep. All right, so PDF eight dollars. PDF part one deluxe has some select pages of script, pencils, and inks. And there you go. Okay, all the variant covers, all that stuff. All right, then the trade dress, the one we were just looking at up there. There you go. That one. There you go. $16. The Virgin variant. $18. And then you got Rachel's. Bella. Bella's cover. Rachel. Rach, Bella Rashlin. Yeah. Rashlin. 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 Something like that. Rachel. Rachlin. Okay. Rachel. Thank you. I've been saying it wrong for a couple months probably. That's right. <laughs> and the silverbacks. I really like that one right there, man. I do. That Brian just showed some showed me something right there. I never seen out of it before. It reminds me of some of David yeah. Max trippier stuff. I'm, I'm a, oh yeah. He also owns one of the very few pieces of art done by me. Yeah. He he owns he owns uh Drunken Frosty. <laughs> I, I sent him Drunken Frosty. I did. I did. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, Jim O'Reilly says she is a top talent. Love her work. So let's see what else we got here. The Rob Ricciano. Mm. Oh, it's up there. It's up there. There it is. These are all beautiful, too. Just saying, guys. All these covers are awesome. I think we got. Uh... We got ourselves a lot of good stuff going on this. I mean, uh, it's, uh, you know, I feel like the book gets pretty well represented in a lot of different ways. So that's kind of nice. All the virgins, packages, what do we have? And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think sometime in the next uh, 
next day or so, we may actually be adding uh, not safe for work versions of all those onto there too. Max knows something about that. Because, uh, you know. Know something about them not safe for work versions of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Brian killed it with that. I like it. Uh, that's a lovely piece. The trade in version on the wraparound, though. Dude, the wrap, I like the wraparound less. I ain't gonna lie. It's, it's pretty badass right there. Oh man, I, I'm 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 desperate for this thing to see the light of day all the way through so that you can see the the cover for issue number six. Cover for issue number six to me personally is like one of the one of one of my favorite pieces of artwork that I've ever done. It it's it's just I love it. Hey, you got a lot of stuff here, man. You got you choose too, two man. virgin variants, choose two digital art covers, got catch up tier. You got it looks like it's all here, guys. Choose three yep. on the trade dress. Oh my god. Any three digitals, choose three virgins. Yeah, it's all here, guys. You know what to do. We Take your time, team. scroll down through Think all of these. Solid. You know, we uh I think we had some hiccups in getting it started getting the kickstarter off the ground and everything we had a few hiccups along the way but uh, i feel like we've kind of pulled it all together you know at the midpoint here and i'm hoping that uh from here to the end we can you know we can take off like a shot hopefully some of you folks watching this will be part of that you guys know what to do you don't need us to tell you see something you like go check it out mm -hmm. go yeah. check it out Come on out and help support the one-handed artist, man. Shoo. Uh, yeah, there's, there's always a catch up. This catch up tier. I'm like, yeah, you know, we'll throw you some mustard in with it if you need it. Beautiful stuff. Now, your your people can find you on Facebook. Are you on Twitter? Yep. Okay, what's yep. your Twitter? Uh, uh, pretty much anywhere you want to find me. You know, put in my name or uh, six us one. S I X U S one. You can put that in pretty much anywhere, and you're going to get me. Uh, it's it's the name of my studio, so that's what most of my accounts and things are under. That I've batted around the idea for a few years of scrapping it or just relegating it back to my my more uh, client based stuff on the CG end, and then just branding everything with my name. But you know, when it comes to art. I'm a workhorse when it comes to dealing with that stuff. I yeah, hate it. I hate with it. There it is right there. Go hit it. Go follow yep. us over there on Twitter too. Hey, I just did. Yeah, I'm not as active on Twitter as I probably ought to be, especially especially since my since my boy Elon bought it. I'm like, thanks, man. <laughs> well, I got a lot of friends who are now out of Twitter jail because of him. So that's good. <laughs> Um, I have a question for you. Do you know the creator of Bloodbone, Edwin Acevedo? Nope. Oh, well, you're about to, because he's our next guest. And we're going to cool. bring him up, because I like to introduce people. Networking is really what this is all about. Hell yeah. That's part of it. How you doing, Edwin? What's going on, Pops? Hey, it's all action, brother. It's all action. You been all checking this out? Yeah, man, it looks dope. It definitely does. So, you know, we'll be promoting this one for the next 16 days. Everybody get out there and check it out. Les, you ain't got to go nowhere, but we're going we gonna to switch gears now. Um, I, I may pop off for a minute so I can go grab me a cup of coffee and then come back if you want to. Yeah. I can get back in here, can I, right? Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, cool. you ain't even got to go nowhere. Just uh, turn your camera off. All right. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to go grab me some coffee and I'll be back. All right, brother. <laughs> We, hello, Edwin. What's happening, my friend? Not, not much, man. Just here trying to promote, trying to get this uh, Blood Bone second chance funded. And and that was one thing I I didn't realize. Both campaigns we're covering today, neither one of these have funded yet, guys. So we got work to do. We're 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 here for a reason. We are going to look at Blood Bone. Now this one is over there on that on that proper that proper crowdfunding campaign. Yes, platform, you know, on my comic, you know, 
You know it. We we the only one we recommend and endorse this to me. You you see me a couple weeks ago at Grand Rapids Comic Con. I was walking the floor with my street team shirt on, bro. Right. <laughs> my comic was on the floor at con. I don't know how many other people do that, but I did it because that's what I do. So what we got here is Blood Ball. The ash can. Go ahead and tell everybody about it, man. Yeah, so uh, Blood Bone's the story of a man who returns to his hometown after being gone for several years, and he finds that it's been overtaken by this criminal organization. Uh, you know, they basically bought off the cops, the politicians, and they're basically, you know, doing whatever they want, and a lot of kind of the people that are in the city are suffering. So Blood Bone decides to use the skills he gained when his time away to uh, become a mass vigilante and clean his city up and take it back uh, for the people. So that's uh, kind of the story of Blood Bone. I, I, I'm getting a uh, walking tall vibe out of this. Yep, yeah, I've, I've heard that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> before about it. Uh, you know, I compare a lot to the first two seasons of Arrow. Anybody who's uh, who's seen the first couple seasons, you know, Oliver comes back from the island and he's got like a checklist of bad guys he needs to take out. Yeah. And he's trying yeah. to basically, uh, you know, take, take back a city which has basically been corrupted by the higher ups. There's definitely a lot of different elements at play, you know. I compare Bloodbone, you know, one of the initial ideas of it, you know, we take a character like Bane, you know, and what what if Bane was actually fighting for a good cause instead of for, for like his own selfish needs, you know, like uh so so he's a character that's doing it for the right reason, but he, he definitely doesn't spare anybody, you know. He's looking to just take people out, you know, the most violent way possible. Bloodbone doesn't play around. And the, the cool thing about this is the guys that he's going after are like real criminals. They're scumbags, you know. They kill people. They torture them. They beat them up. So, like, you can feel free when Bloodbone's tearing up these bad guys, you know. They're, they're, they deserve it. So you, you can uh, relax oh, with that. Oh. I don't have the sympathy for bad guys anyway. There we go. Yeah, but, you know, there's too many people that try to do, like, the shades of gray, which uh, I think, like, has been super overdone. Like, let's just have good guys and bad guys again, you know. Let's... Let's make it real simple for you. Let's just tell a fun story. Well, anybody who's actually done time and done their time, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. bad guys, bad guys. Because we've been, if you've been in prison, you've met real bad guys. Okay? And some of them people should never got let out again, ever. Mm -hmm. Just because you lived with them and you knew. Right. Even though that guy only got four years and he's going to be back out on the street someday, you knew that dude should probably never see the light of day again. You know what I mean? It's like, so we know criminals. Yeah. And I got no sympathy for bad guys. You know, I had to do my time. Shit. It's just for weed, yo. Know? Just for weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean, man. I met some people yeah. who should have never should have never got out of prison, right? For and I'm sure. like, I'm, I'm in here for weed. These people in here for some really bad stuff, you know. And it's like I'm in here for weed. How do I get put with these guys? It was, <laughs> it was crazy, but yeah, um, bad guys are bad guys, people. Mm -hmm. There ain't no good bad guys. Yes, they are. No, there's there, there's well written bad guys, but there's no I good bad. Guys. <laughs> Who's, a good okay. guy? Who's a good Who's bad a good guy? Who's a good bad guy? Yeah, me. <laughs> I knew me. you say that. I knew me, you. it would be me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get down deep. Ooh, I like the look of this guy. Holy shit! What, Fucking this. What? what uh, where'd you get the idea? I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. so I wanted to do something that was completely different from the Ace. You know, I love what I'm doing there, but, it, you know, it's all about, like, outer space, aliens, spaceships, all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to do something more, like, street level, and basically, like, you know, we only deal with, like, enhanced humans in, in this world. There's no, like, big superpowers in it. You know, everybody's got, like, enhancements, kind of compare a lot to, like, the early kind of, like, Marvel uh, villains, kind of like, you know, you have, like, vultures, you have Rhino, you have... Uh, Doc Ock kind of wanted to play with that and do some completely that sound that's completely different. And this kind of when I started developing the idea for Bloodbone, you know, this kind of hulking 
powerhouse, you know, trying to clean up his city for from uh, from this evil organization. So yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun creating it. I put out the ash can last year. Uh, I was just available through PayPal. Uh, did a real sick foil ash can that was available, but a lot of people kind of uh, you know missed out on it, and uh, you know, they've been asking about it. So I thought, you know, let's give people a second chance. Let's use fun my comic again. You know, uh, it's a great place to like host these these projects, get new cover, add us some more pages, and that's how we came up with the second chance campaign. Very nice, very nice. I, I will address this quickly and shortly. Look. I lived in a state where weed wasn't legal. I got caught twice with weed. I went to prison both times over 20 years apart. <laughs> That's the end of the story, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jim likes it. Look, this this up, uh, yeah, I seen you got Don Don Delay doing it. He did that, that one piece. Uh he he does the majority of the uh the Ashcan oh. interior oh. pages. Uh, yeah, Shelby did the new cover right there. Mm. Then Donald does like a lot of 12 of the 16 pages uh, was Donald. So, yeah, okay. man, he just did a killer job on this, man. He just like me and Donald, we have a, a lot of the same kind of mindset when it comes to like what, what looks cool on a page. So like it was super easy to like work with him and just kind of get get these ideas out. And yeah, he draws like a sick blood bone. He I mean, makes them bigger than life, you know, just very over the top, you you feel the the violence. You you feel kind of like that that superhero kind of style that you want on this. And then he runs into the kingpin. Yep, yeah, that's massive right there. You know, they they always say that that old uh, saying that there's somebody somebody bigger. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And you think like, yeah, no, blood bones big and bad. You like, there's always somebody bigger. So how do you deal with that? So. Here we go. Oh, and we got a bonus short. Yep. Uh, like I said, I added some additional pages. Uh, Maxi Dallow did an additional four-page short story uh, dealing with uh, Bloodbone trying to stop the serial killer who's, uh, you know, uh, attacking women. Uh, so you get to see a couple different sides of Bloodbone, and this is kind of how he deals with different types of bad guys and kind of he deals with the, the populace. Yeah, because he's a, he's a scary guy, you know? <laughs> it's the thing, like, you know, uh, Bloodbone doesn't exactly... Uh, you know, scream welcoming figure when when you see him in the shadows <laughs> pop out, you know, you're thinking like, what is this giant mask going to do, you know? So you see him right there uh, putting the beat down on criminals too, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, a fun story. Good stuff. I'm not even that drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard Rich say that on this show. Yeah. I'm not even that drunk. Those are famous last words. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, I'm shit. not as thick as you drunk I am. Yeah. What's up, you? What up? Reminds him of the it Joe. Reminds Madden. me of a Joe Mad on steroids. Yeah, Donald definitely has that style, man. He he's very like cartoony, but it's not like too too over the line, you know. Still like comic booky, you know. So he, he does a great job, man. I love working with him. He's done a lot of different things for me. Like I said, I think like the the pages he did on this is some of his best work ever. Like he really he had so much fun with it, you know. He was telling me like you know let's do more. So like yeah, definitely hope to get him to do some more in the future. So there you go. If, if you want the physical, right there, fifteen dollars. Get it, get it now. Get the PDF for twelve. Um. Oh, that's sold out. <coughs> hey y'all. Yeah. That was the oil ash cans are gone. They are. We're also offering these uh, blank sketch covers. I think there's like limited to 25. Uh, so, you know, and then we're doing like the two. You can give people a little discount if they want to hook up with a buddy and, you know, save a couple of bucks. You can get the, the two for that. There you go. There you go. I'm kind of yeah. late to getting in here, but I'm seeing stuff. It gives me a, like some of those pages, I was like, Felt like Sam Keith meets Mike Mignola. Yeah, right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, Donald has a lot of those uh inspirations for his work. Anybody who's seen him do Brutus, to do Vestige, to doing uh cash grab. You know, he can do a lot of different elements uh when it comes, you know, he doesn't just do the same kind of style. So it's you know, super cool getting him to be just an over the top like this, you know, just power, powerhouses, lots of destruction, buildings being uh broken up and blown up, you know. 
I like I like the I like the big crazy proportions on the character. That's cool. That's what he does. Huh? I'm just gonna leave that page right there up while we talk. Oh, that that's badass. You know. <laughs> Um, I like it, that. Kind of depicts the whole story right there. It's yeah. like dudes like, oh, impressive, Mister Bloodbone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so impressed. A little golf clap he's giving yeah. him and shit. You know, like, yes, <laughs> nice, nicely done, <laughs> little man. You know. I like the idea of just like you know Bloodbone's this hulking guy, and like this guy just kind of looks down on him and, and talks to him like a kid. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I like just. It's kind of like. You know, you gotta throw in some humor on this. You know, can't take it too, uh, too, too, too serious. You know, you gotta have fun with it. So, yeah, I didn't have none of them. None, none of them lawyers and stuff. That wasn't yeah. it. <sighs> Poor people can't afford real justice in this country, yo. Not at all. <laughs> Ain't that the damn truth? Just gotta throw it out there, man. It's like you know, <laughs> two is better than ten. Okay. Two mm -hmm. is better than ten. What's two? What does two better than ten mean? Two years on a plea deal is better than ten years on a guilty, <laughs> yeah. mm. a guilty verdict in a trial. Okay, that's what. I'm All right. Um, yeah, I mean, you shot. You they they make it so that you're either going to go away forever, or you sign this piece of paper. You know, and and they give you a little bit of a, a deal, you know, but Christ, you know they're gonna send you away, so you take the deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got no lawyer, you got no, you know, defense, right? You got no defense. Yeah, pretty much. And and public defenders, they don't care. Mm -hmm. I sat, I sat and watched a public defender sell away a, a client to a prosecutor for a different client. I'll give you this one if you give me that one. Well, it's like mm. training baseball cards. Yeah. So one guy got off and one guy got sent to jail on the whims of two assholes that didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Time goes. You know? Pretty much. And, uh, Guess who was the guy who got sent? Yeah, it was he was talking about me. I'll give you this one if you give me that one. My no, public no, friend Jesus. gave me away like a like Rich said, like a trading card. He got a no. bigger feather in his cap for the other guy. Or, you know, he got a bigger feather in his cap for me than the other guy. Mm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> this part. Yeah, but you know, I know how the justice system works because I've watched it work. Mm. You know, so yeah. a lot of things, a lot of things could change. A lot of things could change, but they won't. You know? I don't go yeah, that's that's the story of about half my damn family. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not the only one. I don't, I don't even play. It. I know. I know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got arrested for a bar fight once. That was about it. Oh shit. Yeah, it was Did fucking you hilarious. It? Did you uh, no, it? I fucking finished it, though. I know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, it was funny because the guy was boasting that I'm a, I, like, I knew this idiot from a long time ago. And uh, when my second serious girlfriend and I broke up, like, he didn't waste any time. He went swooping in. She said no. <laughs> but uh, but uh, he went swooping in, and I fucking heard about it. And uh, <laughs> I didn't see him again until, like, maybe about a year later. Where it's like he he was bragging about how he was like training for being a boxer, and I'm like, yeah, he might be training for a boxer, but you're still a dick, you know, <laughs> trying to ask my girl out. So he started getting all big and bad, you know, like you know, like that fake gangster shit when you're like huffing and puffing and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm about to approach him, and two of his friends fucking grab me from behind and try and pull me back, and then he like gestured like, you can go away because you are less than nothing. So I threw those two bastards off. Popped him in his fucking face, and then I got thrown over the banister in a bar that I we were both we were all <laughs> frequently and shit. I landed on my back, and then I got up like Terminator style, waiting to kill this son of a bitch. But then, mm -hmm. I, then Michael Clark Duncan's illegitimate larger brother <laughs> fucking <laughs> picked me the fuck up. 
when he picked, I could swear it felt like he picked me up by my head. He <laughs> popped my head and fucking threw me out of the goddamn bar. <laughs> and I, I'm looking in the window where like that promenade was where we were all standing and he's holding his nose and he's crying. And I'm like, wow, big tough fucking boxer is all bitching <laughs> out and everything. And it's like, I shit you not, like three weeks later, this guy's father, father, wow. fucking has me, calls the fucking cops on my ass. I get arrested. I spend a night in a can. And then I meet him in a mediation room. And this kid looks like the fucking mummy. Like I destroyed <laughs> his face or some shit. <laughs> And the father even shows a whole crap ton of evidence. Like, look what you did to my boy's face. And I'm like, I thought he was a boxer, you know? <laughs> and he was, and then he was, then he tried to be all sympathetic. He's like, I thought we were friends. I'm like, get the fuck. I don't fucking like you. <laughs> we were friends. <laughs> when we yeah, man. <laughs> I, I think you're my friend. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to. Bang your girl next time I see you. Uh, let's <laughs> bring this back to comics. Let's try to bring this back now. We, no, no, this is comics because you see this guy over here that I'm fucking drawn. I'm drawing this guy over here. He kicks the shit out of fucking people. Look at that nasty. He fucking kicks the shit out of people, right? Look at that. Fuck you. Yeah, look at that. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I'm paying the fucking respect that he deserves. And yeah, not right. only that, this son of a bitch. It's like he's the type of guy that would fuck you up if you did anything with his girl. So yeah, screw that noise. It's like, no, fuck you. You got one of the vampires from Bless's book. I do. Look at that nasty. There we go. I like that. Nice. And you've got Bloodbone on this page. Yeah, that's right. Bloodbone. Fuck. See that? That's, that's <laughs> a crossover print. Back and forth. Get the fuck. Oh, I didn't shit. do this shit for free. Crossover <laughs> print. That's it. Back and forth. Uh, he's, he's, got, he's got lawyer's fees to pay. Come on, Pops. Yeah, I got, you, I got you, lawyer's you, fees to pay. I'm a fucking hard ass, ass criminal. Yeah, getting in a. Bar fight ain't cheap, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you what. As soon as I fucking finish this thing, I'll, I'll put some like destroyed buildings or some fucking demon howling. You know, Anubis, whatever the fuck, you know, and then I'll just, I'll take I'll snapshot it and I'll just, I'll send it to you on social media and I'll take a nice pic of it and then you can ink it if you want. Oh, yeah. Make sure to tag us. There you go. Uh, you're welcome. Fuck. I'm keeping the original art though. So, <laughs> that's fair. No, the original art costs money. We know. We know. Yeah, that's right. It fucking costs money. That's right. We know. That's right. It fucking costs money. Yeah, nasty. Like, give my fucking girlfriend. Why didn't you give me my give me my money? <laughs> All right, my so, money. So what what possessed you to slide on over to fund my comic? I uh, you know I I heard you know what Lucas was, was preaching. You know, like I said, I caught a stream with him and Dillard. and he, you know he was going in about all the benefits for it when it first launched, and Dillard was really. You know, he got in his preacher voice and he started talking about how like people should take a chance and you know, oh, so he, he kind of won me over. You know, I was like, all right, you, you know what, Dillard, uh, you're right. I got this Raid of the White Leopard project. Uh, let, let's put it on phone my comic and see what happens. But yeah, it was one of the early ones on there. Jumped on there with Dillard, and yes, yeah, so I had a great time. Got the book was funded. It's uh, halfway ship right now, getting out to people. So yeah, oh, like one time. That's, this is I'm I'm looking over there at it right now because I okay this is how out of the damn loop I tend to be I didn't even know didn't there know. was a thing called fund my comic until you didn't until know just two seconds ago so I'm over, I'm looking at another screen over here and looking at it and seeing it on there and that's damn cool dude yeah, yeah thank you. um Luke Stone Luke Stone is the one that uh, came up with the idea for fund my comic and actually put it out there and started building a platform for you guys. For creators, just like what we're trying to do with our network for you guys, right? Uh, he got around. He got it, he got it together. He got it built. And, and this looks bad. The hell out of it. Huh? There's a lot of good looking stuff up here, man. Yeah, yeah. Right away. Okay, this thing is what seven months old, six months old, Edwin? Yeah, about yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's it's taken off. And and that's due to a lot of people getting on board and a lot of people promoting the hell out of it. 
Um, it's the only crowdfunding site that I endorse and recommend because it's actually built for you guys. Luke actually yeah. promotes yeah. what you guys do. He's at, Luke's going to be on the show Friday night. We're doing a special yep. edition with Luke right here on oh, the nice. next. Okay, I'd so, have to check that out. I'd, I'd like, like to, to get an introduction to the dude because this is good looking stuff up here, man. This, this looks you really, can, uh, really you problem. Can run, you can run your, your campaign side by side over there. You say you can or can't? You can. Yes, you can. You can go oh, set up one right now. Well, yeah, well, like uh, the, the layout to create a campaign is super easy. You know, I've ran mine on Indiegogo before, and it's, it's it's a pain in the ass trying to do the setup page. The Indiegogo makes you just do so many silly things to set it well, up. On my changed, comic, it's super easy. Kickstarter changed a bunch of shit in the middle of my campaign. Oh, wow. Like how you put the story, how you put stuff in the story part of the campaign. Mm -hmm. They changed a bunch of shit in the middle of my campaign. It was like Lori's over there trying to figure out how to redo, how to do it all over again. Right? Yeah. He's like, come on, man. Make it simple and keep it simple. Stupid. Mm. <laughs> My favorite line. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. You know. But yeah, yeah Bun My Comic is a solid, um, solid platform, guys, with a solid foundation. You got yeah. you got fucking Aaron. Is Aaron over there now too? Or Everybody's dropping over there now. Mike Barron's over there. Yeah, but, I just noticed Mike was on there. Yeah, I, I think Aaron Lepresti might be going over there too, or already be there. Wow. Either him or Graham. I can't remember. Those guys, I get mixed up. Graham and Aaron mixed. I get mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is interesting. I feel like I feel like I need to like bail and just sit and read this site and really look deep into it because uh it might oh, well, be like I said it's it's the only platform I, I endorse and recommend so you know hmm. that that should tell you something it, you know it's it's the if somebody comes to me and says where should I put my book I'm gonna tell them go to fund my comic I'm not <laughs> gonna tell them not to put it in the other places I'm yeah. gonna tell them to go put it on fund my comic you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying I, I don't anti-promote, but I definitely promote, you know. Yeah. This is this is interesting for sure. Very, very interesting. Uh, I was just uh, talking with someone before I came on here about, uh, I'll, I'll leave them anonymous, but someone who's done a handful of fairly successful Kickstarters one of the things that, that was said to me that I thought was interesting, he said, put your put your goal number super low. Yeah. Depends. Yeah. It depends. He, he said put your goal number super low so that you're so that it so that their stuff will say that you were funded, you know, like super quick, and then you're so many percentages overfunded after that, and that it helps the algorithm. Yeah, but what if you only make the fifty dollars more than that logo? That's <laughs> you know, um, some people look at a logo and they're like, "Man, these guys don't have a whole lot of confidence in what they're doing." Yeah. Okay, or you know, I mean, any number of reactions. There's, there, it, we're humans. Everybody's gonna have a different reaction to it. Uh, for me. You better get enough to pay for what you're doing. <laughs> well, that, that, that is a fun issue, ain't it? That's that's your that's gotta be your goal, guys. And probably with a little tacked on for you to make a little something for all the time you put in. Now mm -hmm. that's the ideal goal, Damn right? Great. That you get to put the goal at what it's actually gonna cost you to print some books, and you get to make a little something, something. That's the ideal goal, okay? Uh, a lot of people use the stretch goals to to pull that pull them extra backers in and, and get the extra money after funding, or in case you know, like like in our case for the Roku, okay, we tried to do the Roku, getting the funding for the server and everything to hold a whole bunch of uploaded previous content. We're gonna relaunch it without the server. 
without mm. the previously uploaded content with just this channel going forward but we're also going to put that back as a stretch goal okay so if we get to the amount we need to pay for the server then we will pay for the server and add those tiers back on where people can upload content previous to to the launch but that's the only difference is we're lowering the goal to get it up there get it up there and running and then if we get the stretch goal, we, the stretch goal entices more, right? Okay, we're off, we can offer you something more if we get to this level. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So we got to get to that level in order to be able to offer them the previously uploaded content or, or whatever. I mean, it works for comics too. We, we give you this when we get to this level and we can pay for that. Always make sure you can pay for what you're you're offering people <laughs> yeah. <That's a> <laughs> um, i mean you know it's what you do you get you got to protect your your financial future as well you, you're investing in, in your product and you're hoping that other people will invest in you too that's you right know? you got to protect your woman too and if anybody fucks with you you got to kill them <laughs> rich god damn <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you mean? No, wait. Oh. Cheeseburger. Chicken That's nuggets. stuff I'm seeing on here that I might have to pick up. Some There's some good stuff, stuff over there, man. There's, that's no <laughs> lie. I mean, I wow, love this, this art. This art is so fucking sick. I love this it. This one you're looking at is real good over there. You know. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm digging the really big kingpin. Impressive, <laughs> Mister Blackbone. Your reputation is well deserved. <laughs> Looks like the job just got a whole lot bigger. <laughs> I hope he punches him right in the nuts. <laughs> right. Probably, probably be the best move in that situation. Yeah, man. But it, it, I mean, put a big like but, Walt Simonson Thor crunch next to his impact punch and shit, and that's the end of it. The height differential there, he can use his balls like a speed bag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like digging the digging the digging the It's right there in his wheelhouse. I will say, like, uh, in, the, in the script, uh, I thought about like having him do the uh, the Johnny Cage split leg nut punch, like he did to Goro. Oh my god! In Mortal Kombat, you know get you know the vision, like, oh. oh god! It reminds me of that really fat dude in this in the Fist of the North Star. Where Ken like kicks. If anybody's has anybody ever seen the classic 1986 Fist of the North Star? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, Probably. you haven't. Oh, let's see. Years you're ago, years now. Ago, no, years now. Dude, dude, it's so fucking crazy. He comes uh, like Ken. Uh, Ken Shiro approaches like he's going to, like his brother Jaggy's lair to rescue like someone's sister or some shit and kill Jaggy. So he go and this is really big fat dude. And he's like, ha, 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 you are tiny. You are your your brother told me you were really tiny. I have to stop you from going in. He's like, good, get out of my way, pig. He's like, ha ha, you can't do anything to me. Ha ha, I am bigger than you. And he fucking kicks him like a million miles an hour, and then he explodes. That's this guy reminds me of. <laughs> <laughs> Love this shit, man. I I miss fucking independent comics that are as sick as this. Honestly, I mean, it, it's just, it looks fucking demented. I love the contrasty style there, man. Who's the artist on that again? Is that you? Uh, no, it's Donald DeLay. Uh, I love the contrasty style here. Really, it's just so fucking hot. It really is. I, I love the exact exaggerated figures. I, I love all that stuff, man. That's what comics are really supposed to be about, you know, because I've gotten... I'm sure all of you have gotten to. You gotten kind of sick of some of the stuff that that's that's been churned out by the big two and all that to the point where it's just it, it just it just turns into homogenized crap. You know, it it it, it, it becomes um, God, it, it, it's like a conveyor belt. Yeah, you know, it all like, looks the same. You know, it feels like nobody's showing yeah. anything new. Is that is that cover from the same guy that did the interiors? I uh, know the covers by uh, Shelby Robertson. Hey, that was uh, mm. reminding me of some old uh, uh, Stephen Platt. Yeah. Platt, yeah, Shelby's from that from that era. Yeah. 
Shelby's yeah. pretty badass, man. He's out of Arizona. He kicks ass, dude. He's good, uh, real good artist. Super, super talented. Uh, colored it too, so you know. Nicely done. That's cool. I yeah. think it's uh, American I think it's character. I, I think his uh, YouTube channel is American Discord. Shelby yep, Roberts. American Discord, yeah. Mm -mm. Well, y'all, I'm gonna have to hop off. I got some things I gotta attend to, but uh, it's good meeting you guys. Uh, Pleasure meeting you, man. Yeah, man. And uh, if we ain't already hooked into each other on Facebook or wherever else you go to, then do that. And uh, Pop, I, you and I should talk again soon. I got some questions for you, man. All right. So, all I right. Probably have answers. Uh, probably. <laughs> probably. I don't have any answers. On. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Edwin, tell us something we don't know about your about your journey. Something nobody's ever asked you about. Just tell us something nobody knows. Go ahead. That's I'm tough. Spot. I mean, I'm pretty much open book when it comes to the stuff, you know. Uh, like I said, I grew up in Puerto Rico, so... Uh, I didn't discover comics till like about like 90, 91, you know, just one day going to like a little local store and I saw the spinner rack there. I saw a copy of Spider-Man. I think it was uh, the Foes of Spider-Man issue four <laughs> of a four part series. Uh, so I had no idea what was going on in it, but I loved it, man. Like I couldn't wait to go back the next week. And then, you know, I uh, went back next week. There was no Spider-Man there, but there was X-Men, Uncanny X-Men. And that mm. Los Portacio art just changed my life, man. I had the cover oh, yeah. with Bishop and Stormer facing off against each other. And that that was it, man. Once I saw that book, I was hooked. Dude. I just became like a huge comic book fan. I was there anytime I got any sort of money, just running down, see what they had. Definitely huge X-Men, Spider-Man. Then I discovered some like more like the, the kind of lower heroes like Darkhawk, which I got super into like in the early 90s. Then I discovered DC a couple years later. Became like big into Green Lantern and Flash. So yeah, man, I've uh, been a lifelong comic book fan pretty much. You just, you know, this is what I've always wanted to do. So it, it's kind of crazy. All these years later, you know, finding this kind of indie comics movement, and being able to kind of put out my own stuff is really, uh, you know, uh, it's really been awesome. Awesome journey. Well, I'm happy for you, man. I'm glad yeah, you're one of our friends. friends. One of our Thank friends just popped into backstage, and he usually yeah, has man. He's he questions. Um, you guys you know. Know. So just sit right down, relax, open your ears real wide and say, give it to me straight, doctor. I can take it. I can indeed take it. Oh, Is that, that, that means a lot of ass of you know? <laughs> Oh my god. Pops, I'm gonna get going. It's fucking 9 30 where I am. Since not of, of this sexy bastard here is. You know, you see, a uh, geez, Rich, was it something I said? No, it's fucking nine thirty at night. <laughs> I live in the UK. That's the reason why it's so fucking late. He acts like nine thirty is fucking late or something. Dude, I'm, I've been out of the house since fucking six o'clock this morning. I got home at like fucking seven thirty. So okay, get off my case. Uh -huh. face. I gotta go to fucking sleep. I was Edwin. at six o'clock this morning, and I'll be up at two o'clock tomorrow morning. That's not my problem. That's yeah. yours. I don't care. Don't I care about their drama. I just want to say, Blood Bone right. is a badass looking book, brother. Yeah, man, I love the you. fucking character, man. Good luck with it. I'll speak to you yeah, soon. Man, thank you, definitely. Tell right, you. Man. Peace. Oh man, thank you. This is uh, this has been so much fun working on this book, man. Like people have no idea, like you know, when I when the big Blood Bone number one comes out next year with me and Joe Ball, like people are just gonna lose their minds because. Yeah, it would just take everything from this ash can, which is badass, and we just take it to the next level, man. So, hopefully, yeah. people go check it out right now. Just trying to get this thing funded, man. I think it's, it's a sleeper, it's a uh, it's a whole different world when you're having fun doing what you do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, it doesn't just like you should see like my DMs, man. It's just me and Joe Ball talking about different story ideas. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, what if this happens? Oh, yeah, definitely this page, and then this bad guy comes in, and you're like, yeah, yeah. So we just like going back and forth all day, man. So it's, it's, a, it's a blast. Right there, Doc. That's that's the panel of the hour right there. Yep. I love it. And I love the grab <laughs> the show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's 
that's the kind of stuff that made me fall in love with the tick. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, back in the, <clears throat> God, it's been a minute, the late 80s. It's been a 90s. while, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is, this is good stuff. Yeah, and, and it's and it's got the walking tall storyline, you know, mm-hmm, comes mm-hmm. back to town and cleans shit up. <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, what's this on? is this this is one of those that I gotta get my hands on as soon as I can. Just say it. You know, uh I can't back everything because we'd all go broke if we did. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> But this is definitely on the list of shit to get. <laughs> it's like I have I had the dog back again, wanted to go outside. It's like I know I already let you out once during this show. You don't have to go out again already. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I got something new hanging up here, Pops. You do. Ooh. Looks like you got tapestries. Is it a tapestry? It's a tapestry. Yeah, yeah. I finally got, I had to back my own book to get my own product. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you, you you mean to tell me that your campaign manager didn't have a single comp for the, for the artist and writer? <laughs> no, I, got, I got my comps. I got my whole big package and I opened it up and I'm looking through it. I'm like, Huh, you know what? I've never read this thing. <laughs> I wrote it, but I've never read it. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, is it is it's different. It is pretty good. Read. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I remember uh, I wrote a story for Passion for Drawings uh, magazine called Tales of Nova Terra. Uh, <laughs> and, like, you know, I hadn't seen it published, you know. For months, I was like, yeah, well, I mean, he told me he liked it, so we'll see what happens. And then yeah. I finally got the magazine. The first thing I did was just go to my story and read it. <laughs> and I was like, there we go. It's awesome. Man, I can read the rest of it. Yeah, You know, it, it, I, I've been published before. It's been a lot of years. But it, it's kind of surreal when you when you see something you drew or you read the words that you wrote. And uh, when I read the words that I wrote and I don't sound like an idiot, I'm like, no one is more surprised than me. <laughs> yeah, especially like uh, that was my first ever kind of like just dialogue it's just like mm-hmm. you know thousand word story and so it's just like it's got what, a couple about visuals there. Back, what, what yeah. about when you go back and you read stuff that you hand wrote years ago yeah. I would never be able to time have that kind of shit <laughs> yeah, dude uh, that was prologue and first two chapters of a book I wrote a long time ago oh, like, my handwriting is only eligible to me the first time my writer <laughs> after that is just when I, mean, I go back to revisit them like how the hell does this make any sense you know yeah, it's, yeah. It's the whole thing, though, I usually write on my phone you know so it makes it a lot easier to just keep up with it you know yeah i, I can't read my own hand right what are you doing this stuff? Are you crazy i can't read this chicken scratch and yeah, i wrote especially it like, especially like it's two in the morning when i'm writing down ideas and notes and stuff <laughs> just like <laughs> what is this what is this post-it note supposed to be, be saying <laughs> You get, you get up in the morning. You get up in the morning and you I'm find those ghost notes that you wrote yourself, and, and you're like, "This made sense at two o'clock in the morning, yeah. but not now." This is just, this is pure nonsense. This is, this is stop writing at two a.m. Here, at least I put in the note. I know, like, all right, make a note. Everything's notes on the phone, so it makes it a lot easier. You're like, all right, no for blood book. This actually makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I, I stopped doing that a while ago. It's like it's just there's no way I'm, I'm reading all all this gibberish, dude. I wrote all that stuff way before I was ever involved in social media promoting or anything. I wrote that shit like 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah I, I wrote I mean, lots I was, of stuff too, but I've got too many eggs. The they, they destroy your shit. You know. No, I'm saying I've always wanted to write a book, and I've always had the story in my head. It's just it's an actual book and. I started so doing, when I started writing it. I didn't have access to a computer or anything because I was in a prison cell, and I had to write it out by hand. And the, I got the first two chapters in the prologue. And they don't have uh, typewriters in prison. <laughs> no, not not that. I know that shit, dude. <laughs> oh, well, hold on. They, they probably had a typing class. 
<laughs> that was funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> yeah. But no, they didn't have none of that shit. Some fun. They gotta have some fun. Yeah. They didn't have none of that shit. Not this. Any kind of any kind of programs that you think of were part of prison thirty years ago? They don't have shops. They don't have none of that shit in prison anymore, dude. No, that's crazy. You know, you go to work on somebody's farm picking chilies and shit, but they don't have well, like they don't I've have like a, machine shops. I've got a theory about that though. I've got a theory. It goes like this. Don't go to prison. <laughs> yeah. I got go. a theory about that. Don't make shitty laws. <laughs> Cynical Bleat says, that's crazy to think about. Even three days in the lockup, I was going nuts, forcing myself to recite musical scales. And like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, never, never get trapped alone with your own brain. <laughs> <laughs> that was my thing was I, I can write a book I got time now <laughs> all right the great American novel so <laughs> so uh Edwin when you when you started this one was this a germ of an idea that had been with you for a while or was this like an epiphany that just hit you I was uh, an epiphany like I said uh you know I knew I wanted to do something that was different from the ace you know like as much as I have with that I just want to get in a different space and tell a different kind of story. And then one day, you know, me and my guys, you know, guys from the hard line, Phil Diaz, Joe Ball, oh yeah, uh, Sim, all those guys. We usually do uh, late night hangouts back in the day, and we were just talking about all like these '90s uh, blood characters. Uh -huh. and, you know, we were just like laughing about some of the names and stuff. And Phil threw out Bloodbone. Oh like, yeah, that's such like a great name. And I did a little research. I was like, man, nobody's taking it. Like. You know, yeah. there might be some character named Bloodbone in some random book somewhere, but as far as like a title, nobody's ever used that. And I was yeah. like, who is Captain Bloodbone? Blood, Death, Night, Hawk. Yeah. Uh, you know, I remember the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's like, a, I think there's like a blood and bone. <laughs> yeah. you know, with the end. So there's always nonsense, you know. And I remember <laughs> laughing and thinking like, oh, this is such like a great name. And then I saw like, you know, like the logo in my head, not not the one Hal did, which is even better, but I saw like a logo in my head and I started kind of playing with the idea of like this kind of hulking guy kind of based off Bane. But he's basically, you know, instead of being like a, a villain and a criminal, he's basically fighting for, for the side of good. And that's kind of how like the story just started, started flowing. Then I got Joe Ball to design uh, the original, uh, his original costume. And he designed both Bloodbone and Massive, the big guy there. Mm -hmm. uh, so like that's kind of once once I got started there, I started writing the script, and then you know Donald was the guy in my head from the moment I wrote it. I was like, Donald would be great on this. This is right up his alley. And I worked with Donald before on stuff, and I yeah. pitched it to him, and he dug it, man. So we just <clears throat> both got started on it. I think it was originally like an eight page story. We did like another four, so we brought it to twelve, and we were just having a blast on this, man. Yeah, he really cut loose on this too. Yeah, I think it's. His work on this is fantastic. If you're like a Donald fan, like some of his best work is on this. He just let loose, like yeah, you know, every, every page is just like, you know, he, he kind of got the world, the character, everything I wanted to do. Like we were, we were yeah. super, like in the same kind of vibe. As, as yeah, fun the fun just it. comes through, man. You can see yeah. it. Just jumps off the page, man, and just like, uh, yeah. And then you know, I put it together, put it out. You know, I offered it through PayPal, like a limited release last year. Mm -hmm. uh, with a nice full cover and then you know kind of uh people have been asking ever since you know i think i only did it for like two months nice. so like i came back for the second chance you know the people to give them a chance to kind of catch up with it and like i said i'm doing a full blood bowl number one next year with joe ball which is going to be even crazier <laughs> uh you know when people see the, the stuff we got planned out they're going to go nuts man like we just joe's having so much fun with it too like there's a character in a world that's just like you once you get into it, man. Like there's nobody that I've gotten to do work. Like Shelby loved just breaking loose on the cover. You know, mm -hmm. this is something like he he's not really done for a while. So playing right. with this big giant hulking character just smashing guys into the floor. So he had a lot of fun with it too. So nice. it's like one of those projects that just like get gets artists yeah. into it. And I'm one of those people like I only hire artists if they're into it, you know. Like right, I always right. like to feel the mom be like, Are you feeling this? Or is it just like a check for you? You know, right, like, are right. you really into the idea? Like, like, like the guy that I had, Ricardo, did the original cover for the 
for the photo ash can he got super into it he was like he came up with like he had already like sketches done like right like i talked to him about doing it so like i like that man i thrive off that kind of energy you know because yes. you're, you're gonna get the best work so yeah know. man if your teammates stoked with you then you know they're not i don't feel like you're gonna get the best out of them yeah. if they're not no, digging yeah. it too you know? gotta be it doesn't matter how talented the artist is i you know the excitement's what wins it you know every that's guy that i work with for every project has always given me sign early on that's blown me away you know has always they've right. always gone above and aboard that's how i know like all right this guy gets what i'm trying to do you know because it's right. hard like you imagine things in your head like i'm a super visual guy but I can't draw it, you know, like that, that was never right, had right. that gift, but I see it in my head. And if you can kind of bring that stuff out of my head and make it better, then see? I know you're the guy for it. So there it is. That's it. Hey, what's up Q? Didn't mean to ignore you, sir. Yeah, what up? <laughs> it ain't a show if Q's not here. Just saying. <laughs> so how's the, how's the, uh, this is on FMC right now, right? Yeah. From my comic. Yeah. How's it, how's it doing? How you doing? Oh, it's been good. It's uh, 69% funded. So far, trying to get to a thousand dollars to uh get it fully funded. So, oh, yeah, let's get it there, boys and girls. Number 69, but let's go ahead. It's okay to pledge and <laughs> yeah, you can just it over. You know, we, we got a catalog, <laughs> you know, yeah, 69 is fine, but you got to get it across and, the plate, and, fellas. Have Come you on, notice that it's 77 because you get eight more 77 days to go. You know? <laughs> 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 yeah, this needs, this needs to just go ahead and get funded so you can just relax and enjoy the ride. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I said, I think it's, uh, people are really going to dig it. Like I said, everything is done for this, so it's not going to be too long mm -hmm. to, to I start getting uh, in fulfillment, you know, once the campaign ends. I already right. have proofs ordered and everything, like a super quick turnaround. So early in the year, probably February, March, you should be getting shipped out to people. So like Good said, deal. I'm actually... I'm waiting on a on a check from some pariah stuff, and blood bones on my list of shit to get. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Uh, anything else you guys want to add? Anything else we want to get out before we uh, get out? Yeah, just a no, quick I, note. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I was going to say, Buzz. I got to bounce on out of here. I've got another show that I'm committed to. Um, but I wanted to get in here and, and say hi to Edwin because I love you shit, brother. And I've never got to talk to you before, so it was great to meet you. And uh, chat, you, you guys rock. Pops, always a pleasure, sir. Yeah. Later, everybody. Let me know what your what your deal is for your show on Wednesday. I will. I will. <laughs> okay. He was going to say, Edwin. Yeah, no, uh, like I said, a halfway fulfillment of uh, Raid of the White Leopard. Uh, you know, if anybody backed it and they haven't gotten a tier or just want to know what's going on, uh, you can always uh, uh, email me at drawnaces18 at gmail.com. Uh, you know, uh, I did send out some emails for people to update their addresses. So, uh, you know, if you kind of waiting on the book and you backed it early, uh, just double check your emails. You could be one of those people that needs to update their address so I can ship out the book to you. And yeah, we should be out by the end of the year as far as raid goes. So, you know, yeah. uh, like I said, uh, one of the things about me, I like getting campaigns up, but also like fulfilling books. I got three fulfilled campaigns. This is going to be the fourth one raid. Like I said, halfway done, you know, plan on doing blood bone early next year. So like trying to get these books out to people. So, so yeah. Um, that one's in fulfillment, guys. The White Leopard one. If you backed it and you ain't got it yet, hit that one up. He'll get it to you. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. Um, I'm going to play some commercials as we go out like I always do, but I'm going to play your uh, trailer right here. Yeah. It's the first one going out. So thanks for watching, everybody. Um, got some... So, um, what do we got tonight? Oh, uh, Adventures of Batman and Romo, they're going to be talking about how the internet ruined collecting or something like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we got Tuesday morning brew tomorrow and Ginger Pedro tomorrow and just you know, our normal weekly thing, guys. So stick with the madness. We'll keep bringing you good stuff. Peace, everybody. Thanks. Make it big.
I told that moron not to take out my Tchaikovsky tape. No matter, let's get started. Here we are, Nancy Moon. The last time we left our heroine, she had just joined my steam colleagues at level M. And the soldier who can stop talking, and the kitchen with the money issues, and the vampire with a checkered past. But there are other teammates she's yet to meet. One in particular might be a little bit shocking for her. I do hope she's not allergic. Back it today, won't you? Like right now. creature in the swamps. It lives to destroy. The beast they call Hogzilla. After his latest get rich scheme goes sideways, Gary Duba, the quintessential Florida man, ends up with a stash of somebody's high-end memorabilia. His gal Crystal is on probation and preparing for the fight of her life, squaring off against Australia's queen of combat. Delilah's got her back in training, staying off rich foods and the nose candy. Meanwhile, Gary and his best friend Floyd have been hired to wrangle a massive, abnormally aggressive feral hog that's terrorizing the swamp and wrecking Gary's old neighborhood. Can they bag the elusive monster swine without destroying the Sunshine State? Preserve your copy of Florida Man vs. Hogzilla at FloridaManComics.com. We bring it back, funny books, y'all. Comic Books for Kids provides comic books to kids in hospitals and cancer centers across the U.S. It's a place where we can all work together to make sure every child has a comic book. 100% of all proceeds go towards the kids. It's about making a difference, and while they're in the hospital, allowing them to fly like a superhero, battle dragons, or rescue teddy bears. We are in every state in the country and now support over 160 hospitals. Every month, we add more. Visit cb4k.org.